Welcome to our channel my dear students. Today we are going to talk about the very important topic that is finding out the hybridization and structure of xenon compounds in which we are going to discuss today that is xenon trioxide XeO3 and uh, XeOF2 xenon oxyfluorides then oxydifluoride and xenon oxytetafluorides. Okay, we are going to find out the hybridization structure of these three compounds. In our previous video, we discussed about xenon fluorides, xenon difluoride, xenon tetrafluoride, xenon hexafluoride. We discussed. Okay, let's go and discuss what about the structure and hybridization of uh, xenon oxide. Let's discuss one by one. So here the thing is XeO3. So as we know that it is a very simple trick to find out the hybridization very easily. How we can find out the hybridization easily? So here, as we know that the xenon, what is that? What about the valency of xenon? Xenon is a noble gas. So that it has complete octet computation. Okay. It has eight electrons on its valence shell. Okay. And the thing is, uh, and one more thing we need to understand the hybridization number that is 2 that means the number of lone pair and bond pair addition if it gives 2 that is nothing but sp hybridized if it is 3 that is sp2 if it is 4 that is sp3 if it is 5 that is sp3d if it is 6 that is sp3d2 if it is 7 that is sp3d3 as we know that these kind of uh, simple tricks to find out the structure of structure and hybridization of these things. Okay, let us discuss the structure. So, structure and hybridization. As we know that uh, xenon oxide. So, three oxygens are attached. So, xenon is a central atom out of which. So, how many oxygens are attached with that? So, totally three oxygens are attached. Okay, three oxygens are attached. What about the uh, whether it is a monovalent or divalent, it is a bivalent. Okay, <coughs> oxygen is a divalent one, so that three <coughs> it forms six electrons. It take up the six electrons to form oxygen to be bonded with xenon. So three bond pair I got. This is what this is a bond pair. <coughs> what about the lone pair? Only one lone pair is there. So that means two electrons are remaining. If you consider it is a pair, so one pair is there. If the total is four. <coughs> If total is 4, what about the hybridization? If uh, total is 4, that is a sp3, that is tetrahedral. <coughs> the structure will be a tetrahedral. But it has one lone pair of electrons. That because of that lone pair of electron, the structure of this tetrahedral molecule is getting contracted from tetrahedral to somewhat, something else. So let's discuss what is that. So here, Xenon I will be taken. <coughs> so I can fix a uh, lone pair here. And here one more diatomic molecule. One more diatomic. So what about that? So this is a. Actually it should have tetrahedral structure. If it has sp3 hybridization. But here because of that lone pair of electrons. Because of that lone pair of electrons. The xenon trioxide having. What is that term? Pyramidal structure, pyramidal structure, okay, pyramidal structure or trigonal pyramidal structure, that is a trigonal pyramidal structure or pyramidal structure, are you able to understand whether it is a pyramidal or trigonal pyramidal, are you able to understand students? This is very much important. So we have to find out the pyramidal structure or trigonal pyramidal. So how it be, we can find out? So here the lone pair can be fixed here. So if the divalent atom, divalent atom, divalent atom, oxygen is attached. Because of that, if you connecting these three things, okay, one and two, and if you are connecting these three, you will be getting pyramidal structure. Are you able to understand? So for that structure determination, we should not include the lone pair. Okay, you will understand student, that is what, it is a structure of uh, pyramidal or trigonal pyramidal instead of having its geometry as tetrahedral. Are you able to understand? And next compound is xenon oxyfluoride, 
XeO F2. So here we have to look at how many number of monovalent atom. Fluorine is a monovalent, but oxygen is a divalent. Okay. So here xenon is having eight electron on its valence shell. Are you able to understand? So eight electrons on its valence shell. Okay. So fluorine which take up two electrons and oxygen which take up two more electrons. What about the remaining two things? The two lone pairs or it's a string. So totally how many number of atoms are attached to the central atom? As per our trick, so how many number of atoms are attached? Totally three number. That is two fluoride, one oxide. One flu two fluorine, one oxygen is attached with that. So total number of uh, atom attached to the xenon is three. And how many lone pairs are existing? Two lone pairs of existing. So this is bond pair and this is lone pair. The lone pair bond pair addition is five. If it is a five, the geometry is sp3d sp3d if it has a sp3d hybridization the structure may be expected what is that trigonal bipyramidal bipyramidal are you able to understand students the structure expected should be what is that trigonal bipyramidal if it has a geometry as sp3d hybridization Okay, but it has two lone pair of electrons. How it can be occupied? Xenon. Let's check. So here, the first thing is I have to write the structure. So here, xenon. Okay, how many lone pairs of there? There are two lone pairs of there. Okay, so here it is one, two, and it is three. And here I have two lone pairs. One is one lone pair, another lone pair. Because we have to put the lone pair. With a large bond angle, and moreover, that the fluorine here also we have to place it the fluorine because these fluorine will also having six electrons on its valence shell now. One in the spot bond that remaining six electrons are there. That is what the fluorine should be placed axial. Okay, are you able to understand? So here are two lone pair and oxygen which is having bivalent. That is why it forms a double bond with that. So as we know our concept, as we know that, so for the structure determination, the lone pair will not be considered. So what about this molecule? This molecule having T-shaped structure. Are able to understand? Instead of trigonal bipyramidal, even though it has sp3d hybridization, uh, if it is, if it has sp3d hybridization, it should have a geometry as trigonal bipyramidal. But we have two lone pair of electrons. That is what the structure is contracted <coughs> from trigonal bipyramidal to T-shaped molecule according to VSEPR theory. Are they able to understand students? Okay. And next one is XeOF4. What about that? Here also, the xenon is having eight electrons on its patch. Okay. Four are bonded that means four electrons will be taken up by fluoride fluorine what about the remaining two electrons the remaining two electrons will be taken by oxygen why because it's a divalent atom okay are you able to understand that is what this fluorine 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 is there what about this this will be taken as oxygen are you able to understand that is what we have one more what is that? Uh, uh, one lone pair is existing. Are you able to understand? Let us discuss about the hybridization. So here, uh, xenon is the central atom. How many atoms are attached to that? So totally four fluorine and one oxygen. Total atom is five. Directly attached with the xenon is five. If it is five, how many lone pairs are existing? Because it's a divalent atom, it take up two electrons of xenon. And it take up, it's a monovalent, it take up four electrons of uh, xenon. So totally two, two plus four, six, six electrons are uh, taken up by these oxygen and fluorine. What about the remaining two electrons? The remaining two electrons will be in the form of lone pair. So totally five electrons, five atoms are attached with that. One lone pair is there. This is what it is the bond pair and this is a lone pair. So it has five bond pair and one lone pair. Total is six. If it is a six, it should possess sp3d sp3d2 hybridization if it is as if it has sp3d hybrid d2 hybridization the structure should be octahedral are you able to understand students 
it's an octahedral structure it should have but according to bsepr theory the structure is contracted from octahedral how it is let us discuss if you want to draw this if i if i draw the structure you will be getting understand very well so here uh, six sp3 d2 octahedral is a structure now i am going to write the structure of xenon okay so here how many octahedral if you know that one two three four five six that's what octahedral okay and uh, i would like to write one oxygen so where i have to write the oxygen i, I can write the oxygen here so you just look at so here i can write the oxygen here okay and the fluorine i can fix it here okay fluorine i can fix it here because it has uh, number of lone pair of electrons so that bond angle should be very high and uh, here one lone pair of electrons is there or you better understand students this is what it is a lone pair of electrons so you, you don't confuse this so here it has one lone pair of electron or you better understand this is what it has lone pair of electron okay lone pair of electrons or you better understand so lone pair so now what will be the structure the structure will be this is what is well it forms a spire and which is forms square which forms a square and it is a pyramidal square pyramidal structure so yes even though it has sp3 d2 hybridization if it is having sp3 d2 hybridization the structure should be octahedral but because of this lone pair of electron the structure is contracted from octahedral to square pyramidal are you able to understand according to vscpr theory i think so you understand very well thank you so much for watching please go forward to others to get benefit and don't forget to subscribe this channel thank you so much for watching thank you